Hey everyone, welcome back. You know we love to go deep here, and today we're diving headfirst into a topic that's just, well, mind-blowing. Quantum biology. It's a field that's absolutely exploding right now. Yeah, and I know a lot of you out there are fascinated by it, just like we are. So get ready, because we're going to try to untangle how quantum phenomena might actually be happening inside living things. And to help us navigate this incredibly complex landscape, we're going to be using a framework developed by the brilliant Clarice Aiello. Right. She's come up with this five-level system. Think of it like a ladder. A ladder, exactly, starting from the very foundation. Where, you know, life is built on quantum particles. It kind of goes all the way up to some really, really wild possibilities. Yeah, biological entanglement. Yeah, wild. Okay, let's take it step by step, starting with level one. Ayala calls this the trivial quantum foundation of biology, but honestly, trivial. Right. It seems like a bit of an understatement. I mean, everything being made of quantum particles, that's kind of a big deal. Well, I think the trivial part comes in because it's like the most basic level. It's the starting point. It's not like anyone's out there saying that living things somehow break the laws of physics. Right, of course. I mean, at their most fundamental level, you know, atoms, electrons, protons, everything in the universe follows the rules of quantum mechanics. Yeah, so level one is really just saying that living things, well, they're made of the same stuff as everything else. Precisely. Okay, got it. So, like, life plays by the same rules as the rest of the universe. But what about level two? Where do things go from there? So level two is where we start seeing what Aiello calls quantum effects in what we might call tidy small-scale processes. Tidy small-scale processes. Yeah, basically we're talking about stuff happening at such tiny scales that quantum effects like, say, electron tunneling, they're basically bound to happen. Okay, so like I'm thinking of the electron transport chain, you know, where electrons are hopping between molecules. Isn't that where tunneling is thought to play a role? Exactly. And it's a good analogy to how, say, a transistor works. They operate based on quantum mechanics, sure. But no. they're not necessarily taking advantage of those quantum properties in some unique way. Right. It's just that at those crazy small scales, you can't really avoid quantum phenomena. It's just part of how things function. Gotcha. Okay. So at level two, quantum stuff is happening, but it's kind of just like business as usual. Right. But then we get to level three and things start to get really wild. Yeah, level three. Noise-assisted quantum processes. It sounds kind of counterintuitive. Isn't noise usually a bad thing? Like, it messes things up. Right, that's what's so fascinating here. Like, we tend to think noise disrupts things, makes them less efficient. But when you look at certain biological processes, like, like photosynthesis, the vibrations and all that thermal energy from the environment stuff we usually call noise, right? it can actually make energy transfer more efficient. Whoa, so it's like the system's using that chaos to its advantage. Exactly. It's almost like learning to dance in a storm instead of letting it knock you over. I love that. Okay, so level three is like using the noise to your benefit. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It really challenges how we usually think about these systems. Okay, now level four is where my mind starts to bend a little bit. Yeah. Superposition used as a functional resource. Mm -hmm. This is where we go from quantum effects just being present to like maybe life actually using them. Exactly. This is where we start thinking about living things, maybe using quantum properties as tools. Okay, give me an example. One of the prime examples being explored here is um, quantum sensing. And specifically, we're talking about magnetoreception in birds. 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 There's some really interesting evidence building that birds might actually be using the superposition of electron spins okay. to sense the Earth's magnetic field. No way. Yeah, and that's what allows them to navigate those crazy migrations. Now, if this is proven, it would be like a major step forward, like a slam dunk in demonstrating that organisms can actually use superposition for really specific biological functions. Wow. Okay, we've climbed pretty high on this ladder, but hold on to your hats, folks, because now we're reaching the summit, the peak, mm -hmm. level five. Level five. Entanglement. Yeah. Used for biological function. This is where things get really, really wild, mm. like sci-fi level stuff. Absolutely. Entanglement, it's a whole other level of strangeness compared to superposition. And we need to be upfront here. The evidence for it in biology is still, you know, super speculative at this point. But yeah. if it does turn out to be real, yeah, the possibilities are just incredible. We could be talking about things like uh, biological quantum computing. Whoa. Organisms performing calculations in ways we can't even begin to imagine. So it's like they could be tapping into a whole other dimension of information processing that we haven't even scratched the surface of. Exactly. And it's crucial to remember that level five builds on level four. 
you can't have entanglement without having mastered superposition first. It's like you got to learn addition before you can tackle calculus. That's a great analogy. Okay, so we started with the basic quantum building blocks of life, and we've climbed all the way up to the mind-blowing possibility of entanglement. Quite a journey. It really is. What blows my mind is, what if there are more levels? Like, what if we've only just started to peek into this quantum world of biology? I mean, who knows? That's what's so exciting. This field is so young. There's so much we still don't know. Right. Who knows what incredible discoveries are waiting for us? Well, that's a perfect place to wrap up our deep dive today. I agree. Thanks for joining us on this wild ride into the quantum world of biology. Keep those minds curious, everyone. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye for now. Bye.